All right, in section 11.2, still working with circles. If you just finished 11.1, we worked with circumference and arc length. And now we are going to work on areas of circles and sectors, something called a sector. Area of a circle reminder is pi r squared. A sector, which is actually a piece of a circle, we already did arc length. Arc length was... How long is this compared to the circumference? The sector is the whole entire piece of pie, not just the crust. Arc length was, we're just eating the crust. Sector, we're eating the whole piece. How do you find the area of a sector? Should look very familiar. You take a fraction of the area. We already worked on a fraction of the circumference. Now we're doing that same fraction. How long is or what is the measure in degrees of arc AB compared to 360? Multiply it times pi r squared. We'll do five examples of them. First, they just want you to find the area of circle P. Circle P, find the area. Draw this if you don't have a handout. Area equals pi times radius squared. We won't put the 8 squared after the pi. If we want an exact answer, we call it 64 pi, not pi 64. If we want an approximate answer, we call it 201.06. Just area. And now we do the area formula backwards. What is the area of, it looks like eyes, but it's, what is the area of circle Z? If, it, if the area is 96 centimeters squared, could we find the diameter? We want to find the diameter of it. Well, the only area formula that we have to work with is pi r squared. But we know that to find the diameter, we could always double whatever our radius is. So we're going to take 96, set it equal to pi times radius squared, work the problem backwards, divide by pi, divide by pi, you can't actually divide it by pi, you can't type that in your calculator, not yet, you have to square root the r squared to find out what just r equals, which means we have to square root all of 96 over pi, r equals the square root of 96 over pi, but we don't want r. We want diameter. Diameter, and we can't calculate that because we're going to get an irrational decimal that's going to be rounded. Diameter, we're going to have to take the square root of 96 over pi and times it by 2 due to the fact that we need to double the radius. Of course, depending on your calculator, make sure you know how to work the square root button. If you have a Texas instrument that gives you a parenthesis. You will need to finish the parenthesis after pi. Try it. Don't just trust me. Don't take my word for it. Try it and see if you can type it in properly. The square root of 96, pi, 96 divided by pi, and then you need to double it. Your diameter is 11.06. It would be 558. You could always check it by cutting that in half and typing in pi r squared. And see if you get 96. All right, what we're really here to do, let's find the area of the sector. We're taking the fraction of the circle, 80 over 360, and multiplying it times its radius, pi. Uh, or times its area, pi times radius squared. An exact answer, again, yes, you have to get an exact answer. 80 over 360 times 4 squared. 80 over 360 times 4 squared, of course, as a fraction. You don't want, let me change it to a fraction here. You don't want a decimal with that. You want an improper fraction. You should have, if you used your fraction button, 32 over 9, or you could reduce it first and multiply. 32 over 9 pi, also known as a 
aka 32 pi over 9. Your preference, not mine on that. How, you, how do you like to write it? 32, nine, 32 over 9 times pi or 32 pi over 9. If they're looking for the approximate answer, you of course would multiply that out. Times pi rounded to the nearest hundredth is 11.17. That is the area of the sector up there. If we're throwing a label on it, it would be in square feet. So this is taking up 11.17 square feet of your circular garden that you're building. Find the area of each sector. There's a pink one formed by minor arc BA, and there's a purplish one formed by arc BQA. We'll first find the first one at 60 over 360 times pi times radius of 9 squared. We'll go with 60 fraction 360, or of course, 1 sixth times 9 squared. Gives us a fraction of 27 over 2 pi. That's the small one. The big one, of course, if that's 60 degrees, this must be 300 degrees. 300 over 360 times pi times radius of 9 squared. And you get a fraction of 135 over 2 or 135 pi. If you needed the decimals of those, of course, calculate them out. And the last one, we can't completely get rid of polygons because they were our favorite to work with. We have a circle with a regular hexagon built into it. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. We see the radius of the circle is five, but that's also a side of the hexagon. If we're trying to find this shaded region, there's no possible way for us to find just this little piece and multiply it times six. What we're gonna have to do is find the area of the whole entire circle. Ooh, that's a pretty good circle. And then take out or subtract the hexagon. So let's start with our circle, pi times radius squared, which would be pi times five squared. Not going to calculate that out. Again, we can't have an irrational decimal here and then subtract another irrational decimal and expect to have a good, accurate, rounded answer. This is all gonna to have to happen at the end. So pi r squared is our circle. We're going to minus our hexagon. And let's remind ourselves how to find the area of a hexagon. You take one of its triangles. We're gonna need half base times height times number of sides. One of its triangles, it's equilateral, so that's 5, 5, and 5. If we cut it in half, it's 2.5. So we need half of the base, which is 5. Of the height, go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem if you forgot. But if you remember your 30, 60, 90, it would be, yeah, it almost got me, 2.5 square root of 3. Across from the 30 is 2.5. Across from the 60 is 2.5 square root of 3. Careful when you type this in that you see the difference between your time sign and your decimal point. Maybe I'll even put time signs in there. And you need the number of sides in that hexagon, number of triangles. There are six triangles in that hexagon. And you heard me say Pythagorean theorem if you want to. You could have, if you couldn't remember, 2.5 square root of 3. You could have used the Pythagorean theorem. If you're looking for this height, you would have done 2.5 squared plus b squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then taking 5 squared minus 2.5 squared, you would have got 18.75. You might not believe me, but the square root of 18.75 is 4.33, roughly. Take a wild guess what 2.5 square root of 3 is. 
4.33. So if you forget your 30, 60, 90 ever, you probably won't really forget the Pythagorean theorem if you're looking for that height. Well, now we got to type this whole thing in. And one clear shot, we're going with pi times 5 squared minus, and again, you guys try it on your calculator also. Don't just write down what I have. You have to know how to type it in. That's part half the battle. Minus 0. 0.5 times 5 times 2.5 times square root of 3, parentheses to finish your 3 if needed on your calculator, times 6, you should get 13.59 square meters is how much area we have left after we took our circle and minus our hexagon. That's it for your notes on 11.2. Good luck with your circles.